Let's apply the truth right now, God's love, to the top three tormentors of life. This is a practical application. Let me show you how we can do this with the top fears that I think humanity struggles with. Number one, the fear of death. Right? Let's, let's deal with the fear of death here. When a catastrophic mindset overtakes, masters and controls you, this is rooted in the enemy's lies that death is stronger than life. It thrives on the ignorance of God's truth, His love and His plans for your eternal life. So now if you're struggling with the fear of death, here's the medication I wanna give you that's powerful over this catastrophic fear. Revelation 21 verse four. God shall wipe away every tear and death shall be no more and no more pain. How about 2 Timothy 1.10? Here's a good scripture. Christ Jesus has abolished death and brought life and immortality. Then there's John 8 verse 51. Whoever keeps my word will never die. You see, we're born again for immortality. Yes, this body's made of water and dust and dirt, but you, the real you, will live forever. Praise God. Jesus said that those who had life in him would never taste of death. I have family and friends that have gone to heaven, but I just know and believe in my heart that word of truth that when they left this world, it was like a blink and suddenly within the twinkling of an eye, there they were in the presence of God, enjoying immortality in God's presence and in the presence of love, every cell of their being wrapped in God's love. Here's the second fear that, that's so big in life, the fear of failure. Wow, Michael Jordan said this about his failures. He said, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost more than 300 games. I have failed over and over and over again. And he said, that is why I succeed. Oh, Stephen, come on, what is this about? Well, it's about overcoming the fear of failure. Failure is part of the process of getting to greatness. It's called trial and error, right? You can't fear process, but the enemy wants to build in a fear of process so that we consider it failure. It's not, it's part of you getting to the win. How do we deal with that? 1 John 5 verse 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Philippians 4 verse 13, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How about John 1:12? 1, one of my favorites, to as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the power and the right and the privilege to be the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Then there's number three, the fear of being alone. This is a big one. For some people, they would rather die than be alone. The fear of being alone, loneliness. This can apply to peer pressure. A lot of times people succumb to peer pressure just because of the fear of being alone. They, they wanna belong. The fear of not having approval lures people into bad relationships, bad lifestyles that they would have never chosen on their own, but they just are so terrified of being alone. King Saul was about to fight the fierce Philistines and he was um, losing popularity with his people. His people were scattering from him. He was so motivated by the fear of being left, of being alone, that he did the unthinkable. He justified compromise and he made the sacrifice that only the prophet Samuel was allowed to do. He made a sacrifice that was really an abomination to God. When you do something that seems right, but it's motivated by fear, you lose the war. Saul lost the war and he lost his life. He lost the anointing. He lost his sons. You see, you're basically saying, I care more about the people leaving me than God leaving me. Trust God, wait for God. Don't get into an end justifies the means doctrine. It'll never work. Listen to this. I got one verse that I believe is an antidote for the whole fear of being alone. Hebrews chapter 13, verse five, I love this. God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you or leave you. I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you or let you down. My friend, faith talks just like fear talks. 